everybody, and welcome to another episode of Fantasy Movie Night. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're dipping our toes into expanding the horizons of what is a horror movie. And pulling them out immediately because it's too cold! Yeah. <laughs> uh, look, I what I'll say right now is I'm seeing a lot of grape yes going on uh, <laughs> on the... Uh, on the Facebook page. So it sounds like the listeners are into the idea that maybe we'll do a few like horror adjacent things yeah. like a sci-fi movie or a sword and sandals movie. And that's what brings us to this movie today. Um, a movie that uh, the most connective thing about this movie with my life is that is the one thing that I know my dad and Tom Hanks both agree on, which is that this is the greatest movie of all time. <laughs> oh, we have to blame we have to blame your dad for it. Yeah, oh, he <laughs> played this movie for me so much. I saw your letterbox score. You <laughs> shut your mouth. Yeah. I love how he. This is like the 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 true quotient for for whether or not yeah. Kyle likes it. And Matt does yeah. his. Matt might Talking not do shit. research for the ab- actual show, but he will definitely do research to see if Kyle liked it. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta know. I'm if show, I'm I show have all to, my I show all my cards. I, I need to know if I have to have the the gloves on. Yeah. Uh, so. I I think I talked about this. You know what? I'm not even going to talk about this too in depth because it's going to spoil my double feature. But yes, this was a movie that my dad showed me at a very young age. He used to constantly say, this movie was so ahead of its time. This movie was so ahead of its time. It's yes and no. <laughs> I mean, the stop motion thing had been happening for years beforehand. But this is definitely... I mean, Ray Harryhausen has said this is what he thinks is his finest film. This is like some of the most forward and like detailed stop motion yeah especially of that time period do you, do you want to tell me your favorite stop motion scene in this I movie? was just gonna ask that that, that, that yeah. might be the I mean the skeleton fight is pretty hard to not love but if we're gonna take that off the table it's the Hydra like really? <laughs> that, that multi-headed really the, Hydra I think that the um the the bronze giant was Talos really, yeah. really my fucking, yeah yeah I think it's I mean, Talos it's Talos, I, yeah, it's which Talos. which is crazy because in my mind, just because for years I would say it was Achilles for no other reason than his weakness was in his heel, and I just not my oil heel. The, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gluck, 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 gluck. Something that I never noticed as a kid, but watching this movie, I think is fucking brilliant. Is the way that they start this movie, right? You get the psychic or whatever telling the oracle? the. the Yes, the oracle saying, hey, you are going to be king, but but in a couple years, the son of the king that you're about to kill is going to rise up. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, fuck that shit. I'm just going to kill all of his kids, and then that won't happen. And he slaughters one of the kids, but Jason is protected by the most terrifying statue I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> but then it goes up It goes up to like the gods Olympus, right? And there's literally a line of dialogue where it's like, 20 long years will pass, but up here on Olympus, it is but a second. And then we just dive right into the 20-year time (laughs) skip. And I'm like, that is top-notch. That is great script writing to just... Let's get there. Let's Yo, let's bring you in. You know those gods, if they had smartphones, like they're missing like decades and centuries and just like they're just on their phones. Like, Whatever. Oh, shit. I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't paying yeah. attention to the Oracle. I'm sorry. No, they already knew how succession ended before we knew succession existed. Like that's <laughs> just what it's like up there on Olympus. Oh. <laughs> it's a fun bit, Scott. We're having a good time. <laughs> hey, um, Kyle, are you thirsty? Because I'm thirsty. Yeah, I was interested. I thought you had just a blank bottle in this I've video. Been I'd like to it. know what you got. I yeah, have you got going on. Three Floyd's Rights of Ram India Pale Ale. Very because nice. Because it, it has nice. a goat that you have to fight. And I was like, this is the That's perfect. This is the Jason story that yeah. you didn't get to see. Now I you absolutely the love place. the um I love the what concept. Beer is that you said? It's three Floyd's. It's fine. It's not it's the fine. best. It's not the best IPA I've had this week, <laughs> you know. <Yeah. laughs> um, but um, it's good. Uh, in any case, um, you know, I think that there's this cool thing about this movie is more or less just a shitload of vignettes. Um, yeah. Yes, they're just yeah. stories. Uh, I yeah. could not care less. I really, when there wasn't a monster or stop motion, I already know the basic lay of the land, and so I just 
tapped through. I did not care about yeah. them talking. I also did not care about any of the dances except for the very first one when Jason, as a 21-year-old or whatever he is, yeah. um, he goes to uh, uh, the bad guy, and or he, he saves the bad guy, and then... Um, Polius. Polius, thank you. Um, That's he, all right. I only, have, I only have four notes and somehow <laughs> and I've forgotten. We got to use all of them. Guys, oh my God. So I was going to make a joke about the girls dancing and I was going to say TikTok girls BCE, but I have a much better joke about the oil heel. It's okay. slick shoes. Oh, it's data, <laughs> but way taller. Yeah, green data with slick shoes. Got it. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> um, but, um, but yeah, so, so, Ka- wait, so... So wait, when you were skipping ahead, you may have missed... The no, the one note that I wrote down was that I love that Hercules just shows up with some yeah. big dick energy. Yeah, oh, like they're like hilarious. doing this, they're I doing like him. this dick giant. Swanging. Yeah, they're like we're gonna try to find the strongest and greatest sailors in the world, and it's like showing this montage of all these people getting accepted, and then Hercules just shows up, and everyone's like, "Hey, <laughs> it's him!" <laughs> Bretzy's in the backyard, background. He's like, "Hey." You know, <laughs> Perfect. Which does introduce my favorite character in the movie, which is the guy uh, I, I wrote, Hylus, Hylus, I think is his how you pronounce it. But it's Hercules' little buddy that follows Hercules also, around. Who- um, <laughs> I love the fact that besides Hercules, every dude like supposed to be the strongest man in Greece yeah. look like me. You know, <laughs> like yeah. they're well. That's what I. That's what I like about this dude, though. He shows up and he's like, "I want to prove myself worthy to be on this ship." Mm-hmm. So what better way than to beat Hercules in something? And they do the discus throwing, and Hercules tosses it in the air and gets it pretty close to the rock. And he's like, I'm a smart motherfucker. I'm just going to do the easy route of skipping it across the water and get mm-hmm. even further than you did. And then they're like, he's got great brains. Let's let's bring this kid aboard. And he's just, I love this character. I don't know what it is. Every time he shows up, I'm this like, there he is. <laughs> Look at him. Yeah. <laughs> And Hercules um, loves him too because I, when he clearly gets smushed by a giant statue, oh, Hercules is like, "I'm staying until I find him." It's devastating. <laughs> like, it's devastating. Yeah. Um, yeah. I couldn't hear anybody say Jason without thinking Jason Voorhees. Every time they said Jason, Jason there was this air Jason. of concern in their voice, you, or serious, or was, at least seriousness sh- sh- in their voice. <sighs> yeah. Let's. I, 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 go nuts, <laughs> nuts, nuts, nuts. I. Uh, I did write down a quote. Argonauts, I don't even know him. (laughs) I wrote down down a quote from Hercules where this is when we finally get to see our first monster. They're going to this island. They're told to only take food, like stuff that can be used for food, Mm -hmm. and that they have to like leave everything else. And Hercules goes, does that include the women? And he said, absolutely nothing but food. And Hercules says... Well, if I met a girl with a firm leg, a full bosom, and a warm heart, let no man try to stop me. <laughs> Which is such a 1963 like, quote about women. And the, more, the writer was boy. just getting horny and horny, and then like just was like, "Oh, I gotta get out of this scene." <laughs> <laughs> that writing that line was his cold shower. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Thirty-five minutes yes. into this movie, we finally see our first stop-motion monster, mm. and. I mean, it is glorious. I it's love great. the I love the obnoxious squeakiness of it as it's walking. Like, mm-hmm. and I watched this movie. I can't stress this enough. I watched this movie so much that I was starting to get tired watching it, and I would close my eyes and I would still know all of the music cues that were going oh, to happen, wild. like before they happened. It's just a it's just a lovely movie. I, yes, we, I rented it maybe once. It, yeah. when I was a kid and I it's because I read a book or watched that movie magic show truly it could be one or the other or both that I knew that there was fighting skeletons and then I didn't realize or remember that they were at the very end of yep. this movie last and five minutes of the movie quite I, literally. five five minutes of the I, movie so <laughs> five minutes of the movie for, for anybody interested for once this wasn't on Tubi we watched it on <laughs> oh, I watched it on Daily Motion, and yeah. um I, I I was so confused because there was literally 90 seconds left of the movie and yeah. uh, in the runtime and I'm like it doesn't say that there's a second that there's a second movie or a second but section of it and it's because it was yeah. because they just cut off the the credits but 
Well, there like, are no credits, really. They just oh, says the, credits the, the end. Beginning? Okay. But yeah, yeah. Like, I'm watching it, I'm watching it, and it's like the last 90 seconds, and Jason jumps off of a fucking cliff, and the skeletons <laughs> yeah. jump after him. That actually is my favorite note that I had. I called them <laughs> dust for brains because they couldn't swim for shit. Um, nice. And I want to start you Like, if I was in the Monster Squad as an adult, if they were going to remake Monster Squad and I got to be in it, I would want to call you like the mummy the adult be like, oh you dust for brains or like it's <laughs> dust for brains a, is heavy it's insult, a yeah. really good insult for a monster yeah. I think. like a stupid monster yeah. but anyway well, yeah then it goes to it goes up to olympus and uh hera is it and uh um, yeah, and yeah. zeus are like they banter for 10 seconds and then it just yeah. the end so, he literally yeah, just so promises wild. a sequel and i don't know if they ever got one. i think like, they did just, one i just don't know if it was like they did a lot animated? of Simbad movies. Oh yeah, yeah. They yeah. didn't. They did. I don't think they did a lot of Jason ones. Um, Jason. But you know what? I feel like that <gasps> says a lot about Jason, like my boy. <laughs> it it absolutely makes sense <laughs> that like for how much stop motion work needed to be done, of course the skeleton scene is going to be like a minute yeah. tops. That probably yeah. was like a year of work to get that minute. Oh yeah. But absolutely. it's so memorable and well done that it does feel longer than 60 seconds when you're watching it. I just it. Like, didn't know it was going to be the end of the movie. Yeah. I watched this whole thing. I was like, was it Jason and the Argonauts that had the skeletons? I was like, <laughs> I was like, I'm not sure if it was. Um, but I, I I agree with you too, Scott. I think I I kind of missed in all the times that I watched it as a kid how much it's truly a vignette movie yeah. because mm-hmm. like the king in the beginning of the movie has almost nothing to do with what happens he sets by it the in end motion the i guess he sets it in motion but like he that's it. it like you're yeah like you're just supposed to be like okay they survived this journey to get the golden fleece like that is the goal and like now they have the fleece like you're just supposed to kind of write the ending in your head of like okay cool he's got the thing that will allow him to like defeat the king when he gets back or whatever but what is the <laughs> like, fleece going to give like what what power set does the fleece grant? I know that it I heals think it just well, keeps it saved that woman, right? Yeah, it just and keeps healing it. all wounds. So it'd be like you'd have an invincible army. Like you're but every you soldier you could like, just revive. It, it's not like if you get in pay, it, it, it if you have a thousand soldiers get murdered at once on the battlefield, are you going to have one medic just fucking running around putting that on people for 30 seconds fleece, at a time? Fleecing them up? Yeah. Fleece, <laughs> fleece me, bro. <laughs> fleece me. Fleece. Please. I mean, it might literally just be like, think of it from the from the stance of just like the power play of like, look, man, we can do this shit all goddamn day. So you just want to like step down or like, I don't know. I, 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 I'm not really arguing with you about it. I'm I don't just know Greek mythology like that the well. Greek. You're arguing you know? with the Greeks. Yeah. And they're great at, at arguing, you know, like that's yeah. what they do. Um, <laughs> what they but do. they they. I mean, philosophers. Where did philosophy come mm-hmm. from? But yeah. the thing about this movie, good that, at salads. <laughs> good at salads. As the resident vegan, fuck salads. Um, I am not. I'm not <laughs> a salad man. Scott. I actually. Uh, who was I talking to? And um, I said, "Fuck salad." And like, you should put that on a t-shirt. I was like, "Yeah, but I actually don't want." People will take that as something else. Yeah, like those dudes <laughs> who define themselves by having a beard and a smoker. Stop talking about my wife like that, Scott. <laughs> no, she doesn't have a beard. Kyle, she he is said having beard. a beard, not being yeah! a beard. Yeah. <laughs> we remember the stigmata episode. <laughs> it's like the golden fleece, really. It's like I don't need any. I don't need um, any. Listen, other. I don't need to know color, I'll stop texture, talking about power generals, sets. Yeah. Any of those Can we, things. So let's talk about some fashion in this uh, in this movie because <laughs> there is a note that I wrote where uh, the the ship I should mention is named the Argonaut after the builder of it Argos, mm-hmm. and there is a scene where this giant bronze statue reaches down <laughs> and he picks up the Argo and he starts shaking it all around and let me tell you Argos is confidently wearing what looks like just an adult diaper and nothing else on this Dude, ship. it's not just like, him. Wonder, when they're fighting the harpies, there are multiple men wearing yeah, underpants. That guy right there yeah, in the it, corner. They look like diapers. The one built like Danny DeVito. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he does look like I'm Danny a DeVito. trash man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, even even the fucking 
the uh, the giant bronze statue. He's wearing fucking underpants too. Um, yeah. Yeah. What what do you do? I really wish that I had like a Nutrigrain bar with me right now so that I could make the diaper sound. Because you know, yeah. like back in the '90s when you'd have one of those in your pocket, you were so worried that people would think yeah. you're wearing an adult diaper. When I can promise you, no one fucking wonders if you're wearing an adult diaper if you're 16 years old. No, yeah, no, it's nobody. only if you smell like piss and shit. <laughs> yeah, it's only. It's the Are only we starting time a ever, new Kyle story? What's yeah, and that's. <laughs> the only time I've it's wondered just if my somebody's diaper, wearing baby. an adult diaper. Yeah, don't worry. Don't worry. It's, it's, it's just what, look, it's what it's there for. Look, I it's just like, need a change. It's like when people it's walk fine. into the bathroom and, like, I've I've had multiple people walk into a public bathroom while I've been there and wherever I am in that bathroom. But they're just like, oh, it smells like shit in here. It's like, well, yeah, this is the best place for it, dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is, uh, like, this why is are you surprised? Place. No, he, this is the place for it to smell like. It's always it's those dudes who eat, eat, have a beard and eat meat. Uh, yeah. Oh, so their my wife just, included. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, sorry. so listen. When I used to work in an office, I always knew who it was that would shit uh, because they were the ones that had the really? like they were the most out of shape motherfuckers mm-hmm. that had like the mm-hmm. most disgusting meals that they would bring to work or that they would always go out to eat like chilies at lunchtime. Oh, and I'm like, first God. of all, that is. In this economy, um, but also, <laughs> uh, but also, I just knew that they were not taking care of their intestinal health, their gastro mm-hmm. uh, gastric health, um, because it just smelled like death. And um, mm-hmm. I need to remember Kyle saying this story next time I'm trying to let out a secret poop somewhere. Because, mm-hmm. like, in a bathroom. I'm not saying, like, in yeah. someone's <laughs> just, bed. just on the right. side of the road. You know, like, in your adult diaper. <laughs> yeah, in my adult diaper. I'm just trying to let out a yeah. secret poop. Those because, trips to like, Pennsylvania take a lot of time. Dude, okay, <laughs> great, great example. When I am, <laughs> like, if I ever have to, if I were to have to do a grumpy at one of those beautifully auspicious. Dude, PA really truly it's is because they charge you on $100 stops. to go across the fucking co- <laughs> right. state. That's true. That's fucking true. The, I saw another TikTok that said that it is the most expensive toll road in America. Yep. And I know oh, I because I do it more than once a year and it it is it's a night at a hotel. They're very very clean, wonderful, but I there are like 15 stalls and yeah. you know that if you have to use one it's going to be a disgusting poop and second of yeah. all somebody's child with sticky hands is gonna like find the find the slit and they're gonna stare at you mm-hmm. and you'll be like what are you doing i'll be like what yeah. do you think i'm doing child right where's yeah. your parent right, right. Yeah. yeah get think your parents think about think about the options for ask what your we parents do in here yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> as Kyle, I, I just realized that we never even figured out what the fuck you're drinking. That's okay. I was gonna, I was gonna let us, I was gonna <laughs> let us know because it's also, it's, I, I, I phoned this one in really bad. I had a hard time finding something that would match. Uh, so I just, I, I grabbed this sour called Walkabout because there's a whole lot of walking about uh, in fine. this one. Um, and it's a white peach and cranberry sour. You know ale. what would have been perfect um, for Matt to drink? He could have got in on this with us. He's, he never does. Listeners. We need to like get mad into the into the having a special beverage thing. It doesn't have to be alcoholic. I sometimes drink a liquid death. It listen. No, it's because you always drink water. What we need to do is we need we, he, if he loves Greek salad so much, we could have gotten I don't. him a. <laughs> you just said that they make great salad, so Matt loves I, Greek salad. What we're gonna do is we're going to mm-hmm. get mm-hmm. we're gonna get the brine from feta cheese, yes, and we're gonna yeah, mix yeah. it with cucumber water, and right, we're gonna have right. him drink it. I know he Jason likes a little bit of nuts. spice, so just like a pepperoncini in there too. Just yeah. one, one pepper. <laughs> Why not? Let's get wild. Garnish. Come on, is, I cannot drink anything but water up here for the next three months because it is like a goddamn I've sauna been there in this the summer. Little studio. I know. Yes. Yeah, it ain't great. Um, all right, oh, yeah, you so, need us to come put the AC in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, so let's jump to the next the next monster. Oh, yeah, more monsters. Oh, yeah. The, the, oh, yeah, the, we got to talk we about see, that. We see what fate has come to the Oracle for for basically telling a man what the gods' plans were in the beginning of the film. He's had his sight fully taken away from him, and now harpies torture him by taking his food I, whenever he goes to eat. And I... Love the look of these motherfuckers yeah. too. Like the harpies were up there for me. Too. You know that they would have rotocapped those like in the in the eighties, that and they yeah. look great. I mean, this, this stop motion is pretty much untouchable. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it this is. this might be the best. It's the most like I want to say it's seamless. Like you can always see the seams in stop motion, but like 
you can tell that this was shot with a very meticulous focus on care yeah. of like oh, yeah. where are these creatures going to be and making sure that like if someone's swinging at it that it looks like they're making contact well for the but surrounding tech for the surrounding technology it it kind of is seamless. Like I, I feel yeah. like there's like uh, there's technology that uh, besides the actual craftsmanship of the stop motion that there's shit that you can't really you couldn't have dealt with because there's you're still making a movie in sixty three yeah. or whatever. Um, and especially like when any of those monsters are holding another human being and you see the stop motion human like that is in there too. Like those that looks Harry Halson's really fucking fantastic. good at that. Really He's good at that. Super good at that. Like even yeah. in like the seventh voyage of Sinbad. Like you watch that one and the seamless cutting between a claymation person in something's claw and then like the human hitting whatever like practical yeah. they had built to match the claw. I you know I, I'm really more impressed good. with the people that were fighting the monsters, the stop motion, than the stop motion fighting the humans, if that makes sense. Because oh, sure. the, yeah. the like it was way harder to, to get your your um what, what would you even call it? Like the choreography, I suppose. Um, yeah. Like yeah. Jason, Jason kicks at one of those um, skeletons in that last scene, and I'm like, he biffed that. But it's nowhere near as bad as Return of the Jedi when Luke kicks that one guy on the barge. Yeah. It's like, oh, wait, sure, it's, yeah. It, which is like, you know, a good couple feet and away. There's at least a person that he's kicking at yeah. in Return. Yeah. Like, uh, all right, so they go and they meet with with uh, the 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 oracle and he tells them that they might have to sail between clashing rocks and he gives them an amulet of triton says to use it if they're in danger so they are in danger because it's (laughs) called clashing rocks and jason tosses in there not really a stop motion as much as a forced perspective type deal we get here but we do get fucking king triton just like Bursting mm. out of the water and holding, like, holding so the shit down for him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Another diaper. diaper. Yeah, uh, you know that diaper is always wet. soaking yeah. wet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it kind of like <laughs> at this point the movie kind of speeds right along. They they meet another king. Uh, we we didn't mention this, but like the evil king from the beginning of the movie has his son like pretend to just be a regular peasant and get on the ship. Uh, so that that. I could Prince. tell it was him though because he's wearing pink. Yeah, evil. Uh, he uh, <laughs> <laughs> he basically like rats out Jason's plan to this king. The king then imprisons the Argonauts, but uh, the priestess of this land has fallen in love with Jason Classic. and uh, sets them free. And this is where they have to go and kill the Hydra that protects the Golden Fleece. And I do. I just. I love the. I love a Hydra, man. A Hydra's great. Mm-hmm. Hail Hydra. Uh, it shows up. Yeah, they kill the Hydra. The king shows up and takes the teeth from the Hydra and uses it to raise seven skeletons. And then we've already talked about the skeletons. It's a great little battle. I I think yeah. that the last like 15 minutes of this movie is phenomenal. Like from the Hydra scene on, it is just a good ass time. Yeah. I love this movie. I hope you guys at least enjoyed this this brief experiment into doing some weird 60s fantasy. <laughs> I didn't hate it. No, I was totally fine with it. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to change the entire show to do this all the time because I would get tired of it faster. But I mean, we've watched a lot worse shit. That's more horror. So we're yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. This was just, yeah, this was for me. was just like just the pacing. Cause I think also like I, every Greek mythology thing that I've seen and like, with the exception of maybe one or two is all vignettes anyway. Like anything that I've read and like, it's all just lends itself to being these small, stories but then it's like oh this is 1960s people talking and it's yeah yeah i'll just, wait for, the, I'll just wait for the monster I, it's a lot of yeah, a lot more dancing um and and yeah i hated it that was actually my least favorite yeah. part of the movie i could listen to the king the evil king talk all day long but show me yeah. people show me the women dancing and i'm like nah i'm what, fucking out of here what he called hospitality when he first brought He's jason like, and he was like <laughs> Yeah. yeah, bring in the dancing women. It bring was very man. Women. It was very man show of uh, <laughs> of him. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, that was Jason the Argonauts. Hi, friends. The world got you down. 
Don't be sad. Listen to $2 Late Fee with Zach and Dustin. $2 Late Fee is the podcast that celebrates the best decade of entertainment, the 1980s. We pick a movie and soundtrack from our youth that we loved and see if it holds up today. We also interview your favorite celebrities from that era. All in the spirit of positivity and togetherness. Check us out at $2LateFee.com. What would you double feature it with? This is a prime example. This is a prime example of why uh, I'm not friends with any of the kids that I hung out with in elementary school because there was definitive sleepovers where this double feature did in fact take place. And it was essentially just for an audience of me and a bunch of very bored kids who were unfortunate enough to be on the same Little League team as me and thus invite it to whatever birthday party I was having where we watched Jason the Argonauts and the 1953 House of Wax with Vincent Price back to Oh, the you talked about that when we did House of Wax, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 So, wow. so I, I had to. Had to follow my heart well, on this Well, have fun, one. Matt. Yeah. Um, that'll be the a great best time for, for us you for an you. eight-year-old. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Get some culture for these little fucking. Red yeah. Did rats. anybody's <laughs> parents sign off on that, Matt? Listen, you're talking about at a household where my dad, when I turned, I think I turned ten, he's like, he's double digits. He's old enough now for me to rent Porky's and Animal Animal House for his friend's sleepover. And my mom was like, you, we didn't even give any parents a warning that they were about mm-hmm. to see their first pair of boobs Oof. on a screen. Boy, that certainly sounds like me. Uh, <laughs> as a dad, I think we're going to run into some issues. I, I also <laughs> love that my thought process for your dad was, oh, Matt's 10. Let me give him a pack of cigarettes. I don't know why. Does your dad even smoke? <laughs> <laughs> nope. No, Brian started that trend in the house. Yeah. Uh, but, on his 10th birthday. Yeah. yeah, House of Wax, 1953, what about you guys? What, what would you double feature this with? Uh, I just got to go Disney's Hercules. Um, <laughs> of course. Like, Bless it's, my soul. It's, one, <laughs> it's <laughs> probably my favorite Disney film. Um, and it's got some of the best songs. It really is. I won't it's say lovely. I'm in love is an underrated yeah. masterpiece. And it'll move. It'll move. It'll move quick uh, after this baby. So Yeah. Well, I would follow you, up Scott? Jason and the Argonauts with a nice little round of my favorite Second favorite Switch game of all time, um, Hades. Uh, you play Zagreus. Ah. Um, he's the son of Hades, and you battle your way out of hell. It's a, um, it's, it's referred to as a roguelite um, style uh, battle game. Um, so it's a bit of a dungeon crawler, but it's also you get to kind of build your character's power set as you go through and are gain you gain boons from the uh, the gods. Super fun game. Um, I could play that game once a week for the rest of my life and probably never get sick of it because it's kind of just a little different every time. So super, super fun game. And it takes about 40 minutes to play the entire game, even on one of the harder level, harder because you can make it more and more difficult. That's why it's still fun to play after all these years of like three years of me playing it. All right. Well, I think that wraps up the show. But uh, we do have one more vignette. Oh my god, another vignette and it's with the skeleton. This one has the skeletons. <laughs> yeah, this one's exciting. Hey Matt, so like the skeletons, you're about to jump off into the the water, and fucking idiot skeletons can't swim. What have you consumed that you would like to share with the class? You know, I'm gonna talk about something like actually pretty serious and heavy for once. Uh, but do you want to go last? Because I don't. <laughs> No, 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 no. I'll keep it quick. Um, Apple TV dropped a beautiful documentary recently called Still um, about the life of Michael J. Fox that is just, it's it's absolutely heartbreaking. Um, and it, it really dives into like what his life experiences are. And I've realized, I realized watching it that I have not actually watched Michael J. Fox walk in a really long time. So actually seeing like, how much of a struggle that is for him. Uh, it was really tough to watch, but not only is it a really sad and beautiful documentary, but it's really interestingly edited because they do this cool thing where they must have combed through hours of footage to literally like find scenes from anything that Michael J. Fox has ever acted in to use as like the flashback footage to when he's talking about his experiences in 
the process of going mm. through his diagnosis. And it's just re- like the way that it's cut together, it literally feels like they shot footage, like recreation footage. But it's just them cutting together so many different pieces of different Michael J. Fox footage into like a cohesive thing. It's it's really incredible. Um, and it is interesting to watch because he talks about uh, and they show a montage of it, how like he could keep it in check if he was constantly uh, moving his left hand. Mm-hmm. And then they just show a montage of like everything where he's just like checking a watch. He's like playing with change in his hand. He's like flipping his keys in his hand. Like the the amount of effort and work he put in for eight years of having that diagnosis with nobody but his wife Man. knowing um, and just masking wow. it from everybody. It It is really impressive. And it's also, you know, it's kind of an empowering story of a dude who is all accounts told like you will never like this is this is your life now like you are going to have to quit acting and just be a guy with parkinson's disease and his like absolute refusal to let that be the narrative of his life so uh highly recommend it's it's beautifully done apple apple tv really kind of has been hitting out of park between their tv shows and their documentaries and their movies like they're just Top tier, one of the top tier streaming apps as far as quality content. I also yeah. like anyway. the use of the word tier because um, fucking cry all the time when you watch shit on that shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh boy, man. Apple TV knows that between sh- between Shrink and Ted Lasso and yeah. still they know how to squeeze every little <laughs> every a little salty salty yep. piece of water I got in my eyeball. <laughs> it's always raining on my it's face. It's from that pepper and chini. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that whatever that's whatever that's that weird drink is y'all gave yeah. me. Um, <laughs> Kyle, um, I uh, I I also watched something a little heavy, uh, so I'm sorry, but I watched uh, Titanic six six six. It's a two B original. Yeah, um, no, and it's <laughs> heavy the because thir- it's a Titanic. <laughs> yeah, it's the th- it's the third time this ship has had trouble. It's this is this is about it's about the Titanic three, uh, and li- I I wanted to watch another two B original, but I didn't want to watch Terror Train two. And but let me tell you what holds up is that my theory and thought that Tubi can just be the Hallmark Channel plus horror. Man, they fucking did it here with Titanic six six six. It's it's in uh, co production with the Asylum, obviously. Of course. Um, and I, I just man, everybody gave it hundred and ten percent. Nobody phoned in a damn thing. Uh, I don't really remember what it was about, uh, <laughs> but it was the. Th- I just knew that it was the third, like, recreation of the Titanic because there is a Titanic two, uh, also on two B, I think. Mm-hmm. And, Titanic two B. Um, Titanic two B. Yes. <laughs> or not. Or not two B. <laughs> and uh, but it is two B. Uh, let's be clear. <laughs> uh, and it's and you know they just basically they just introduce a bunch of characters there's two influencers there's one like guy who brought all the titanic things that they found under the sea onto this ship and those curse oh the ship. it's supernatural and, yeah okay. it's supernatural it's all ghosts uh okay. it's all like it's a supernatural yeah it's it's honest and Anne Anna Lynn mccord from excision is in it oh, she's wow. well, yeah what? um the lead from excision yeah she's in it uh nobody else that i recognized but every everybody Everybody does their part, uh, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, I don't know; I wouldn't recommend it to anybody, but it was fun. Um, if you it's just if you're just feeling, it's one of those. I mean, it's a. It feels like a Sci-Fi Channel original. It feels like a Chiller original. Those things don't really exist for us anymore. Like even the mm. sort of the Sharknados or the other, you know, the, those things are kind of in a realm of their own. Titanic six 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 really does feel like those those original channel movies so like uh for it to be a Tubi original it solidified Tubi even more in my heart uh for the programming that i want so are we are, so we're doing that as seen on Tubi shirt now right we have to I, yeah, I, yeah we got i to. would love it I don't know if we'll get a cease and desist, but as long as I what get a shirt out do? of the deal. <laughs> Tubi doesn't I have mean, that money right. to stop us. That's right. That's right. And plus, we love you, Tubi, so yeah, don't we, stop we us, please. You, this is all We give you props every week. Come on. Every, really every week. Yeah. 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 <laughs> all right, Scott, 
Take us home. Um, baby. So I have a, a book that I just finished, and um, it took me a, su- a a year because my mom bought it for me last summer, and I wanted to share it on the show because it's got the ah! it's got the the um, Braille type yes. what's that stuff called like the embossed cover. Uh, embossed. Oh man, yeah. um, it, it's Clive Barker's The Inhuman Condition. It's uh, uh, the second time I've owned it actually in my life. I read this when I might have been a freshman in high school or the summer before my freshman mm-hmm. year of high school. Um, I didn't remember a fucking thing except for the body politic. Um, so really fun read. Um, I absolutely love Clive Barker. And I realized more so than any other author, when I think about summer reading, at like a, a horror summer reading, it's not Stephen King. Cause I used to read Stephen King all year round. Mm. Um, when I was, you know, reading, books and books and books this is before the internet you know uh and now i find mm-hmm. myself just wasting time reading wikipedias and stuff like that or going down rabbit holes but um <laughs> i i love reading a uh, a clive barker horror short sto- vignettes um not, i don't really enjoy his non-horror stuff i mean he's a great writer i just i don't need to read the non-horror stuff because my mom bought me a second one that I'm going to immediately start on. I may not finish it in time for next week's discussion, but if not, it'll be two episodes from now. I also have In the Flesh, which is Ooh. probably the one that they did right before or right after. It's right before, and it has my favorite Barker sh- story in there. I'm so excited for you. Okay, so Babel's Children has only ever been done in another form, which is in a comic form. I'm not I won't tell you much about it. I will say that it's probably like in in theory one of the lesser Barker esque short stories that's in there, but it's my dream to adapt that into a feature. Like it's it's my goal, it's like what I it's what I dream about, and I'm so excited for you to read that short story collection. It's one of my favorites. I've kept I don't keep a lot of the books that I read, even though I have a bunch of books behind me, mm-hmm. which you can't see because Talos is, Talos is there but <laughs> that that one is on a special shelf for me because it like totally it's yeah so anyway I won't hype it up too much I would like to hear more about the inhuman condition that you finished yeah yeah well no inhuman condition is great um I uh, the body politic still such a great fucking story I explained it to Megan um last night after I finished this book and she was just like kind of in shock of how ridiculous and i'm like yeah but it's really fucking cool the way he tells the story you know and clive barker is just i mean when i read books when i read books of blood volumes one through three last summer i think i really only read him in the summer nowadays which is great it's just a ritual it's hot and sticky and And gooey and it's perfect for the summer um that's what i'm saying but uh (laughs) i actually I i think that the most memorable piece from books of blood one through three was um pig blood blues yeah, I love that. Yeah. And it was just Pig because it's fucking great. He thinks about monsters in such an interesting way, and um, you know, I really enjoyed even even revelations in the Inhuman D- Condition, which I felt was um, I don't want to say weak, but you know, it, it just it wasn't mm-hmm. it wasn't my. It, he tried something different, and I didn't love it. Yeah. Um, also, there's yeah. that one where the, it's the um, what's the what's it called in one of the previous books of Blood. Um, about the the cancer that controls the cinema, the theater. Oh, um, the tumor. Rather. Oh, it was a celluloid. Celluloid, celluloid dreams. Cinema? Um, celluloid or, you know, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, whatever it is. Uh, it might be celluloid dreams, but um, that mm-hmm. is such a great concept f- yeah. uh, for monsters. And then the the other one where. There's the, the 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 actors that have been dead for fucking ever, and they do the play. I just I love the way that he comes mm-hmm. up with monsters. They're like yeah. such yeah. oblique concepts for monsters, and it makes my brain go in very. It twists some interesting ways, and I lament my life not having more time to write short horror because he just makes me want to write short horror. I mean, I always thought that yeah. I would as an adult and I just haven't. Um, yeah. I, I know I, there's always, there's always the future, but there's always, there's always time and there is always time, just but so, it does make so you good. like, yeah, it is so good. Oh, I'm so excited for you. Uh, yeah. So 
Oh, Down Satan was the other one. Oh, I Down Satan is from. a great short, and it was very short. Yeah. That was like 10 pages. I loved yeah. that. That was super, super cool yeah. because I saw it. It kind of telegraphed what it was, um, mm-hmm. and I just was like, fuck yeah. It's such a great – he's just so clever. I mean, even when it's not yeah. – even when it's not – a story that I absolutely love. And he does things that he writes as a gay man in the eighties. He writes yeah. about vaginas in a really uncomfortable way for me. Um, mm-hmm. And feminine power yeah. is, is kind of like so alien to him. Um, yeah. But even it's almost what makes it interesting because it's like, like almost a character but also at the him, same time, it's, you know, yeah, right. And it's so, but it's so hard to grasp too at the same time. Cause we've been fed a certain, a different thing. Yeah. Like we've been fed so much different shit. Yeah. Anyway, I, I absolutely love Clive Barker and I'm just going to try and cram as much in this summer as I can, because it's a finite nice. amount of horror short work that he has that I haven't read now. And I just need to need to get it in my system. Yeah, there man. Go. Scott's oh, got to get it in, and we are done talking about Jason and the Arkanon. Jason. From 1963. Jason. Jason. Uh, we'll be back with more of what you expect from a podcast called Horror Movie Night Killer next Hera. week. Uh, <laughs> so stay tuned for more Horror Movie Night goodness. <laughs> listening to the Geekscape Network.